Straw Hut Media. Welcome to another episode of Genuinely <laughs> Gigi. Um, are you good? Yeah. Anita's good. Anita's good. good. She's I'm, tired. She's overworked, tired. you guys. Anita Gohari Events is at large. Anita's doing amazing right now, and that's why... She sort of looks like this right now, so we're going to excuse it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'm kidding. Well, my I'm kidding. You look awesome. beautiful. My I'm outfit just wasn't as different as we are as with everything. Like, you inspired me to buy this you. outfit. This is totally a GG outfit. Is a, this is approved. You had the same thing it's on. It's approved. And I just was trying to be like you. I love it. You look so. snuggly, wuggly. Yeah. I'm so cute. And, and cool, like you. I don't know about the cool part, but you do look cozy. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um, I'm excited. That was a very amazing conversation that we had with Rachel yeah, Bradshaw. Mm-hmm. She's amazing. I'm sure you guys all know her. She has a show out on E. It's season two right now of uh, the Bradshaw Bunch. She recently had an episode where she talks about going through fertility program and freezing her eggs. Mm-hmm. And you guys know I went through that. Yeah. So I love when I see other independent women or men going through that process. So we brought her in to talk to her and ask her a few questions. Yeah. Right? Right. Let's have babies Let's without that. needing dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know her from Shaws of Sunset. You know she doesn't hold back. I called every single one of my girlfriends. I said, stop what you're fucking doing. Go freeze your eggs. Just go freeze your eggs. Put them on ice like a vodka. Just go put them somewhere. This is Genuinely Gigi. Do you guys have Trader Joe's over there, Rachel? Yes, I love Trader Joe's. <laughs> I love Trader Joe's too. Mm-hmm. The shit. I Anita just picked up these chips called um it's like everything, the, everything but the bagel, bagel chips. chips. No. <laughs> oh my god, we were just I was just rolling a joint right now and she opened the bag right now. And we're just <laughs> munching on them. <gasps> munching, munching, <laughs> munching, <laughs> munching, munching, munching. <laughs> They're so good. Oh my god, you guys, everybody, please welcome Rachel Bradshaw. Hi, beauties. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I was just telling Rachel, I'm adoring her top. Um, It is very fall where you are, right? Very fall. It's like in the 50s today. I'm super excited. Are you? You like the cold? I do. It's just like it's so freaking hot in Texas and to the point where it's like you're melting. And so we look forward to the fall big time here. How cold is the winter there? I mean, it's not that cold, but it will get into like the 40s. Maybe if it's like real cold, the 30s, but and we'll have a snow every few years or something. But mm-hmm. oh, you do? Mm-hmm. I didn't know there's snow in Texas. Yes, not very often, but we'll have like a big snowstorm every couple years. Wow! Oh my goodness, I I'm so happy you're here. I know you're super busy because you guys are in season two of Bradshaw Bunch. <laughs> it's on E. I saw the first season. I love it. It's hilarious. You guys are just. I don't know where you guys have been for so long. That's like, like, (laughs) you guys needed to be on TV a long time ago. Save the best for last. Yeah, I love watching (laughs) it. It's a lot of realness. It's a lot of honesty. It's a lot of humor. I love your show. So congratulations on season two. That is so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here and taking time. But I do not want to talk about... Uh, your show or, well, a little snippet of your show, a little snippet of your show. I want to talk about something that, uh, is very dear to me and a lot of women and men as well go through similar processes. You recently revealed on your episode that you were considering, uh, going through the IVF process, which the first part was freezing your eggs. Correct. Yes. And this is something, uh, do you go through with this? Um, yeah, I do actually. Um, it was kind of on a whim we were filming and I was just having, I'd been single for a long time and I was having anxiety attacks at night. Like, Oh my God, I'm never going to have kids. I haven't found the right man yet. And so I was like, Hey guys, I'm going to go through this process. Cameras or no cameras. And it's going to be emotional for me. And they're like, would you allow us in there? And we ended up getting in there and it was not what I thought it was going to be. So I, you do go through that process with me. It was very, um, very just um, kind of unexpected what my results were, but you get to see a lot of that play out on the show. Okay, so I will see a lot of that on the show. Um, when you when it, I know you can't say much because people are going to see it go out, but if you were to think about it um, psychologically or emotionally, were there any reservations that, you know, 
I, I can do this on my own. Was it a confidence? Because you come from a family. You guys are well established financially, um, figuratively. So it's it's an easy step to make. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe for someone like you or myself, which I went through, you know, the IVF process. Is this something that you say, I want to make people see that this is an okay thing to do as a single woman? Oh my God. Absolutely. Like I, the finance, I, it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone no, knows not. that and no insurances really cover this process, which I think they should. But, um, yeah, so I was confident going in like, okay, I can pay for this. I'm good to go. But my God, like I didn't realize, um, my results were going to be what they were. And I wished I would have told my 28 year old self, just go see what your body's doing. Just be educated. It, it costs nothing to walk in and then just look inside for a second and um, do an ultrasound. And so um, I agree. I, 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 after I did the IVF process, the first thing I did, Rachel, I called every single one of my girlfriends, including this one. I said, stop what you're fucking doing. Go freeze your eggs. And so many women, so many men, we'll get to that part, but so many women think, oh, I get my period every month. I'm so fine. I'm okay. yeah. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that until that day comes where whatever it is that they're looking for, so the, the love of their life or you know that special moment where they do want to get pregnant or they do get pregnant or they just can't get pregnant and they mm -hmm. get pregnant and they keep having miscarriages. Yeah. Um, I learned so much going, I'm sure you learned as well. Did you recommend this to your girlfriends? Or did you say, go out there, do this? Absolutely. I'd had a lot of friends with fertility issues, lots of them. My, I'm 34. So a lot of them are a little older than me, a little younger. And, um, I just hadn't been in a marriage, you know, I was married years ago and, you know, that ended tragically, but I um, saw them all kind of go through their struggles. And I was like, oh, that's not going to be me. You know that you're invincible type of type of mentality. And I was like, I, you know, I'll be good. And um, whenever I left the doctor's office, I mean, I called all my single friends and I'm like, do me a favor. If I am a good friend, you need to go check your body out. Like just know where you're, where you're at. And it was surprisingly, I had a couple girlfriends come back calling me crying. They had very low levels and, wow. you know, went through the, the egg freezing process just like I did. So I got to like help some people out that were good friends of mine, but yeah, they would have never done it. That's amazing. That's a, that's, that's what it's about. You know, I recommended it to all my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Anita knows I said, stop, please go, you know, freeze your eggs. Did you ever think about, um, I, I've, I, I was too late. I feel like it's too late. No, that's my, and, and no, I want. not only no. her, I'm 40, I'll be 43 in December. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to go freeze eggs that like, I don't know. I just feel like it's it, at this point, like, I feel like if you're 30. Well, six thirty-seven. It's still okay to do, and I keep telling my this younger sister to do it. So I'm telling her what to do. I think for me, it's too late at this point. I'm gonna tell you something. One of my very good friends, her name is Nancy. Um, she is 45 years old and just had her her little girl, and they were going through. Uh, they probably did like 15 egg retrievals. I mean, they spent more money than they ever, you know, would have hoped. But they have their little miracle baby, and like she was not the the most fertile but like they have a kid and she's so happy and it's such a cool story it's so but what worth age it. did she start the whole process like 39 see 39 is still different than yeah 42 she, had, she was struggling to get those those eggs and yeah. you know whatnot yes because that's what that's what rachel and i are saying right now is you can be 25 and not have issue. That's eggs true. That's true. and you can be yeah. 45 and have the best i have an autoimmune disease i have done drugs for such a large part of my life i used to treat my body like shit with alcohol and pills and yeah. everything when it came to my fertility i thought my doctor is gonna you know go in there and look inside and be like follicles are there we got no eggs eggs on top and i went inside and he said wow we have 22 23 24 25 eggs oh my God. yeah so i'm like what oh wow <laughs> i was i'm hyper producing but some mm -hmm. people are not so it doesn't really don't think because of your age or anything that's just true. go because you're never just, as yeah. young as you are yeah. today that's true you're never as young as you are today yeah. And I've been, I was literally to the point where I was just chase. I was just jumping into relationships and falling in love. Cause I'm like, I have to lock someone down. I got to get married. I got to have a baby. Literally. I was so fucked in the head with this process. It was just, it wasn't even healthy anymore. So that's what kind of urged me just to 
to go just go check it out. But it's never too late ever. And, and I'm I'm not going to reveal any details. And I know you're not either because you're being so, so, so perfectly um, secretive about it. <laughs> but you did reveal recently to E! News that you do have a boo in your life. He was mm-hmm. obviously not in your life while you guys were filming this season. No. Um, so people see you as single, but you do have one and you are keeping that under wraps. And I'm going to completely respect that. But what I wanted to ask was, um, if you guys ever do get to a place uh, speaking that if you want to have children, will you choose to maybe use your go through the IVF process? Say, I have these eggs. Why don't we get your sperm and make mm-hmm. some embryos? You know what I mean? Because I'm all for that, because yeah. after knowing how much you can test in that embryo and make sure that your child can That's, have yeah. that many less possibilities. Yeah. Um, so you would do that. Absolutely. Um, we've been very, I've known him for 15 years. We were in a very committed, loving relationship. And I was very open about that, you know, from day one. And um, now we're, we're, you know, we're very much in love. And absolutely, we were actually, we're going to go to the doctor soon and just kind of check my body out again. It's been like, six months since I've done that process. And I just wanted my body to relax for a second. I know that you have arthritis. I have, I'm made of metal. I'm like the bionic woman from my, my scoliosis surgery. I heard, I heard you have extreme uh, scoliosis. I have scoliosis. I have the S I have 33 degrees on one side, 28 on the lower, but not to your degree. Yours is very extreme. It was very extreme. So I got, um, the surgery at a, I've got two titanium rods and 42 screws in my back. So wow. my God. That's so so you're like a, like a metal detector. Ding, 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 Like ding, a ding, dream. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> no, you don't want to fly with me. They're like, ma'am, ma'am, step aside. I'm like, I promise I have nothing on me. I'm made of <laughs> titanium. It is hysterical. Oh my oh, gosh. So wow. Well I, well, I also heard that because of that, you turned that into a plus and you became affiliated with something very amazing, a hot yoga a company called uh, Hot Works. Is that right? Because of your uh, back situation. So Mm -hmm. you took this negative and turned it into a positive, Positive, which is amazing. I did. I was, I was struggling really bad because when you have that type of surgery, your body, it, it, it traumatizes your muscles and your bones and it takes years to come back. And I started doing the hot works and I was literally like healing. So I just Instagrammed the CEO and I was like, my name is Rachel Bradshaw. You know, I have a platform on a TV show. I can help you. You can help me. And he literally responded. I I became their brand ambassador like that week. So it was really cool. Uh, that's beyond amazing and i don't think it's i i mean you have the story to go with it you're not just randomly promoting something just you know for bullshit you're living through it and i love that that's why i respect you know hot works because i'm saying okay this girl has all these rods and screws and everything you know she makes music every time she's in the airport security section so <laughs> you know she must be knowing what to, now did that in any way affect your fertility your spine being that shifted your hip, everything. How, what does that do to your body fertility wise? Honestly, um, it could have been a very big part of, of what's going on with me right now. Just you're shifting everything and your body is literally being traumatized and it takes years to get healthy again. So my doctor, you know, infertility doctors, they can't give you exact answers because there's still not as many tests done of why, why are some people they're in, they're not fertile, but there's no explanation. It makes no sense. They don't have those answers. And so, um, he goes, you know, this could be a part of it. This could be a part of it. Weight can be a part of it. Like there's no answer to this, this this whole like world. So it's like very frustrating as a woman and, and for a man, you know, it's just like, there's no right, right answer, but that could have been a big, a big part of it. Yeah. Are you afraid of that as a pregnant woman, uh, your back and pregnancy? I mean, that's, I have rheumatoid arthritis and I, I got hit hard while I was pregnant with it. So I can understand what it feels like when you're putting on all this weight and mm-hmm. creating a human, your body's going through so many so, crazy uh, hormones and jumps and this. Are you nervous that this might do something? Is are, your, are you safe to be pregnant with all these rods maybe is what I'm asking? I'm nervous. Yes, absolutely. Just just my back hurts as, as is, you know, because it's, you know, been, you know, so much been traumatized with the surgery but yeah i am scared of of getting pregnant and having that extra weight um but it's like my sister's pregnant right now she's almost due in like six weeks and she complains about her oh, back. Okay. Yeah. i know i'm so excited but if she complains about her back hurting i'm like oh my god what the hell is gonna happen to me yeah. <laughs> if i have a baby and yeah your body's changing so i i 
I guess we'll see. I'm, but yeah, I'm I'm nervous. But yeah, it's, it's all worth it at the end. You what? It's like, it's all worth it at the end. It so. definitely is, and I'm trying to convince you of that. So you can like maybe <laughs> maybe I'll make you go with me to get. I had a, I had an appointment. This was like a, two years ago to to get the to see what's going on down there. Yes, uh-huh. Chuck. I freaked out that morning and I canceled it. I don't know why. Because I always said to myself, I'm not going to do it alone. Like, I don't think financially I'm ready to like take on this, you know, like and put this kid in the best schools and this and that. So but I feel freezing like- your eggs is different than having getting pregnant. Just go freeze your eggs. Put them on ice like a vodka. Just go put them yeah, somewhere. Well, let's go yeah. see if you I know. even have what's going on down there before I even do that. Well, right? yeah, they're going to see. Will you go with yeah. me? If she goes with me, I'll do it. I'll, well, I'll step out of the room when they put the stick in your vagina. I mean, no, we, you we, just, I, I don't know if I want to watch that part, but I'll see it all. I'll, yeah, I, I don't want to hold all. your hand okay. through that part either. Fine. But okay. I will be there okay. supporting you from the other room. Okay. Yeah, you. I did the same thing. I was like, I m- probably made like five appointments, and I cancel. I was like, cancel, cancel, cancel. I didn't want to know. I'm like, she did too. Really? Why do we do that? I, but why? I didn't want to know. You don't want to know, Rachel. Why? Why did you? What? What? Why? I just didn't want to know. I'm like, I'll just get pregnant, and it'll just happen, and I'll meet the love of my life in a, in a week, and whatever. And then I got in there, and I'm like, well, fuck. I, okay, I just. I hated that I had canceled appointments two years prior that I should have probably gone to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think women should be afraid of this. I think women should. I mean, if if I had a daughter, I swear to God, the minute she turned 18, I would go get all of her eggs frozen. I'd get like a hundred of her eggs frozen just for her future. Just so she knows. Yeah. Sweetheart, go live your life. Do you don't ever be afraid of finding Mr. Right because you're getting too old and you got to pop a baby out. Go live life, baby girl. And then you have all these ice over here, you know, these eggs over here on ice. You know, I, I would recommend that. And to, to men as well, guys think, and I'm sorry to get a little graphic, they think because they jizz that that means there's a bunch of <laughs> sperm in there and that their sperm is healthy. And guess what? Majority of the time, it's, it's the them. Man. It's the man it's that's the man. having the issues. Yes. 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 That is so interesting you say that. One guy, I know this is a little graphic, so one guy was like, oh, let's get graphic, Rachel. It's never too graphic here. We're trying to keep it kosher a little bit. So get graphic. Yeah, please. <laughs> He said, I have really big balls. I'm so I, I'm so fertile. And I'm like, just because you have big nuts doesn't mean that you can make a baby. Like, how <laughs> stupid are you? Like, <laughs> what in the fuck is that? Is that a Texas thing? I've is never that, yeah. heard of guys with big balls thinking they have lots of babies. That's so funny. <laughs> I had never heard of that. And I was like, what? You have big balls. Like, what does that have anything to do with your sperm count? Or like, it was just, and then I Googled it. And, I, and there wasn't much online about that. But I'm like, this is so weird. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back... I hate the gym. I hate the gym. I don't go to the gym. Fuck the gym. Sorry. Sorry to all the gyms. No, I I, I agree. I would love any gym sponsors out there, by the way, but that's okay. I do love the gym if you want to pay me more. (laughs) Genuinely GG is supported by BetterHelp. BetterHelp provides professional counseling securely and affordably online. They'll assess your needs and match you with a licensed professional therapist. Everybody deserves the help and support they need to live a happy and healthy life. We all have our own at-home remedies, but sometimes the one thing you need is to talk to someone who can help. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly and video phone sessions. They offer licensed professional counselors who specialize in a broad range of expertise so you can find the right therapist without ever setting foot in a doctor's office or waiting room. Legitimate mental health from the room of your choosing. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash genuine. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash genuine. Teamwork makes the dream work, Anita. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's do it. Let's all do right. it. We all know you have a very famous father, Terry Bradshaw. We all know that. But I mean, so let's put the, his fame and all that to the side and just being dad. OK, mm-hmm. because my dad sat in the actual room with me, with my parents. My, my sister was there, too. 
while I actually got pregnant. Wow. You know, so they're all watching on a big screen. My legs are up. But my you, dad's won't come to, you won't come with me, but there you have your dad in your room. I mean, how <laughs> okay, many people sorry. can say my okay. dad watched me get pregnant? <laughs> okay. So go. OK, wow. That's so so yeah. would you ever invite your dad into that room if you are up, legs up, like, you know, your new boo is there because you guys are like, you know, making it happen. Sis, you know, nieces, <laughs> nephews, everyone's just... Yes, actually on, well, whatever it's, 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 I'm not giving anything away, but he comes to my appointment with me and he walked into the room where the guys jack off and they have all the magazines and he's like, <gasps> oh my oh God. My. Oh. <laughs> where am I? And we were literally like the camera guys were crying, laughing. He didn't know where he was going. <laughs> this is amazing. That's amazing. Oh my God. I would die. I would die just, oh my God, my dad, I would, I would, I would want to like Windex my dad, my dad's eyes, like, no, no, no. Oh my God. I think it's cool though, because you can't, it's like, so your dad's supportive. He's so supportive and we're such an open family. Like I'm very, very close with my dad. So he's like, you want to get, you want to get, you know, your eggs frozen. And he was so sweet about it. Cause I was very single. I didn't have a man to lean on or a lot of girlfriends. I was kind of private about the experience at first. And so that's all that I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, what would you say to maybe your girlfriends or a lot of women that are listening right now that maybe they don't have that same dynamic that you have with your father, where maybe they're, they're more conservative and more strict where it has to be a man and mm -hmm. a woman, or maybe they're gay and they want to have a child. And what, what would you say, um, having now gone through it and you're about to show the whole world publicly, what would you recommend to people to have uh, strength to go through this? You know, I injected myself every day and I honestly was went through the whole process alone um, because I was just like, I can do this. I'll be fine. But if you don't think that you have that strength, some people just don't want to do it by themselves. And I understand that. Bring a friend. Bring like anyone that you just trust that can comfort you because it's you're injecting hormones, your your stomach is bloated, it's a very emotional process. It's not cheap. It's like have have someone with you. I should have I should have probably had someone by my side. I had um, a sister that was like, let me inject you every day. And I'm like, no, I got this. I was a little too prideful about it. If I were to do it again, I would bring bring somebody that you love and trust that you can they can give you a hug or help you with your your shots you know just that kind of support really helps the process i'm really glad that you said what you just said right now being prideful about it because i feel like i went through that as well because i decided i'm going to do this alone I'm, i got a sperm donor i'm going to have the baby fuck what anyone thinks because that's who i am i've always been this way and i've always yep. wanted just the child and not the relationship, you know? So for me, it was, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, make some babies. I'm going to go shop around for some sperm. And, <laughs> you know, it was nerve wracking. There were times, you know, I was like, what am I doing? But I realized I can never let anyone know that because then they're going to say, well, what the fuck are you thinking doing this all by yourself and getting a sperm donor? So I kept all of my feelings, my fears, my those hormonal moments, because people don't realize how much hormones you're pumping inside of your body, oh you know, to go through this process, prepare mm -hmm. you to drop off an embryo and you're pregnant the mm -hmm. next day, your body's amped. And I'm not an emotional person at all. So I'm going through all these waves of emotions and I'm pregnant now and I don't have anyone to tell. I'm scared. Yeah. Because I was afraid of, well, what the fuck were you thinking doing this by yourself? Right. And you went into this, mm -hmm. Rachel, thinking I might end up being by myself. I'm going to take that risk because a child is more important to me. And I loved that factor of it. And I think that should be the biggest push mm -hmm. and influence to people. It comes down to were you destined to be a parent in your heart and soul? Because if you were, then this go save your fucking money. And there are yep. loan programs. I did a, a podcast about um, you saying doing that, for, and there are loan programs for certain people to go out there and get help uh, to do this process. Um, I wish it were available to everybody. I really do. Mm -hmm. But um, there's ways to make it possible. It's just got to feel it in your heart. Some people would rather have the partner, the love, the journey of that. And if children come along with it, then it is. Mm -hmm. This process is not for you if you're one of those people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not for you. It's, it's one not. of those things where I need to have a child type of a feeling. Yes. And I love that you did that. And you're still open that I did that. I'm showed the world, showing the world that I've done that. And guess what? I also 
have a new boo in my life. So, <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's okay because life happens. You might end up falling in love. You might not. It's like, yeah, right? Well, and you know what? Like when I went in there, I even though I had my dad and, and my family, you know, along, the, along, I'm still going home alone. I'm not, I'm still injecting myself by myself. I don't really, ha- I didn't have anybody really by my side. Um, but I would lay my head down every night and I'm like, you know what? I know that I am meant to be a mother at some point, whether mm-hmm. I'm 40, whether I'm whatever age, I don't care. I just want to know that I have that insurance policy that if I want to have a damn kid without a guy, that's fine without a partner. But like I, I could sleep at night every night being like, I'm doing such a good thing for myself. And to be honest, I'm probably gonna have to do it a couple more times. I don't really know what my journey looks like, but um, I think on a lot of television shows you see like positive outcomes and with such a fun family show my outcome was not very ideal and so um i was like that's okay air it like let people see what's gonna happen because like i like you see on the show like i'm single the whole time i'm the single sister i can't you know i keep dating all these assholes and it's like hello (laughs) story of my life it was so funny oh my god i've been through the ringer and i (laughs) I've let them show that. And so it's funny, like the day the cameras wrapped, the next day I met my boyfriend. Wow. And I'm like, motherfucker, you've got to be kidding me. Like, like that's where were so you? Crazy, uh, like, where right? was yeah. he? Uh, but no, it was supposed to be this way because I can guarantee you the amount of people who are going to benefit from yes. watching this season mm-hmm. just because of you being single is yeah. going to be magnificent. And you know what? I'm glad that you're saying it's not all peaches and creams and unicorns and rainbows. Yeah. It is a hard process. You're, there are not always success stories. Mm-hmm. I was lucky as well to have my process filmed when I, I was pregnant last uh, two seasons ago. Mm-hmm. And I did IVF. IVF is a process for those who don't know. They bypass their fallopian tubes. It's which That's where the sperm usually swims up. It goes in the little vagina, mm-hmm. swims all the way up the canal, through the fallopian tube, lands mm-hmm. in the ovaries, right where the eggs are. It grabs onto those hair follicles and the eggs. I had the the baby now the the em- embryo bypasses that goes and sits directly in there where it needs to be it's planted now in my little tum tum mm-hmm. and a fluke situation happened it went into my fallopian tube it ruptured i lost both my fallopian tubes right mm-hmm. now they say statistically okay. it is less than a 1% chance for this to happen oh, my, my doctor God. was yeah. devastated my surgeons in the emergency room had never experienced this in 25, 30 years of Mm -hmm. being surgeons. They said, we've never seen this from an IVF. So it did not in any way discourage me. Mm -hmm. I was happy. I was filming at that time. I was happy that I got to see myself be emotional on TV. I got to tell the world this is tough because in three months after that, when I was fully recovered, I was pregnant again. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't need anything to stop me because I was determined. So again, this is not for anyone who thinks it's a trend right now. Everyone's having babies and naming them after random streets and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's it's a real thing. It's a yeah. whole child. It's a whole human. It takes a lot of psychology to it. It talks a lot of emotion. It mm-hmm. takes a lot of money, oh, you know? Yeah. But it's 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 about love first and foremost. And I'm so happy to know that you're doing this, Rachel, and I'm happy you're an advocate for it. And I can't wait to continue to keep watching, you know, this. Are you going to continue showing the world uh, about hot works? Yes, absolutely. I'm very like when I tell you, like when you're. I had to learn to walk again. I was bedridden for three months. It took me three years to get over the surgery. You know, your body is, it, it's a new body. I grew two inches taller. And when I'm telling hmm. you, like, I tried, hmm. what, you grew two inches? No, 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 no. She needs to, she's a hunchback of Notre Dame over here. Yeah, okay? it's so bad. What? Oh, it's oh my horrible. God. Horrible. I'm telling you. I did Pilates. You can't run. I was so restricted. I did every workout in the freaking world you could possibly do. And then I bumped into this company called Hotworks. And I was like, what the fuck is this? This, It's literally like magic in a box. And I, I gave it like five months of going like three, four times a week. And I'll never forget y'all. 
I touched my toes for the first time. Like I'm made of metal. Like you can't, you can't bend, but that the infrared heat literally healed my body. And I touched my toes and I started crying and I was like, okay, I'm like oh the perfect God. advocate for this company. This, we got to make something work out. You have to go. It's unbelievable. Oh my God. Anita, I think you need to, I think I'm I'd love go, to. Would you, it sounds like okay, it's such for good you core too. Well, strength core in this hot just, works. Oh my God. In the core, GG, the core class is the best. It's so I, good. That <gasps> sounds gonna amazing. Go. I'm going to go. check out hotworks.com and, and I'm yes. going to find something that works for me and for you. You can maybe, you know, do different types of classes and see what works for yeah, Are there a lot of, yeah, different type of classes and stuff you can pick from? So. Tons. There's yoga, Pilates, hot bands. There's a cycle class. There's um, the core. There's one called warrior. Yeah, there's like, 12 I think different classes okay it's very um I did a hot yoga a long time ago and I think I was probably like wasted on some sort of drug at that time it was, I was younger. <laughs> and I started hyperventilating yeah I, I got really scared and and now as an adult I, I've come <laughs> to a different level of mental clarity I've heard so much that it's so psychological that you have to detach your mind from self and just be so for that, I really want to try hot yoga and just see yeah. if I can challenge myself into doing something like that. It's a really dry. I've done the, the like the Bikram hot yoga rooms and they're really like there's a lot of moisture in the air and you like can't yeah. breathe. This is like, yeah. like a dry heat and it's just so good. Like your skin looks amazing. Like you're you're. It, it's very it's it's hard and just like your mentality you leave and you're like I just fucking crush that like I can do anything in the world and it's like 35 minutes and you get more of a workout doing that than you would go to the gym for two hours I hate the freaking gym I hate it I hate the gym I hate the gym I don't mm -hmm. go to the gym fuck the gym sorry sorry to all the gyms no I try yeah, I agree I would love any gym sponsors out there by the way but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> I do love the gym if you want to pay me for it. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh. So I know that you have something amazing coming up. You have a Christmas single coming out November 12th called Christmas to Me. And here's my favorite part because, again, she has a very famous father. You're featuring your dad on the song. I am. That's amazing. So amazing. Tell us, how did that come about? I just love Christmas. It's like our family is just like, I, I think for a lot of people too, it's just the, like the best time of year. I love Christmas, but yeah, I was I agree. writing a song um, with a couple of my friends. I was like, let's write a Christmas song. And it was um, just all about like my family and our traditions and all these really happy moments. And I was like, why wouldn't I have my dad? Who's he's actually a really good singer. I go, I want to feature, I want to feature him on this song. How sweet would that be? And he was so excited. And then on the show, you see the whole process go down. It was really, it's very special. Oh, really? You guys filmed it. Oh, I can't wait to see that. There's a whole like Christmas episode. My sister does something really special for me to get me in the mood. And it's just really fun. Oh, really I love fun. that. Oh, the song is going to be much more special for us to hear it yeah. now that we know the backstory and everything to it. <laughs> I think it's great. You get to work with your family. I wish, I wish, um, if I have anyone out there listening from Bravo or NBC, I wish I had a spinoff <laughs> of, you know, my family to, cause like, we're really cool people. Not as cool as the Bradshaws, <laughs> but we are cool. I think it's great that you get to do that with your family. That's, it's really yeah. cool. Cool. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. Okay, how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, girl. Oh, my See? God. You don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> don't I ask this one. I'm known for like a she million years. She can't even pronounce I... my first name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say my first name. Golnessa. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's it, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I had to like really try. Okay. Yeah. But what you never you... call me. You I always call... say Gigi. I call... I'm the kind of person that just calls people by nicknames. Okay. I'm just, that's me. Like, I never call her by your last name. I don't call people by their names. My last name, okay, so the first GH and the last <laughs> GH are what fuck up the whole last name because it's it's very French. It's the back of the throat, the qe, right? So uh, it, it's uh. Cara Chedori. Oh my goodness. Uh, I know, girl. It's, yeah. That's beautiful, but I don't think I can say that. I know, none of me in Texas. I'm sure there's an enemy in Texas. Why not? We don't have that last name anywhere. Actually, it's not Persian. It's Turkish. It's interesting. It's it's my father's father's, obviously, side. that We got the Turkish side in us, but it's a Turkish last name. So even in uh, Persian people sometimes can't even pronounce yeah. it correctly. It's a very long one. It's difficult. 
I was for high school graduation, the person <laughs> presenting diplomas. <laughs> but oh, every no. single day for a week, I had to go in for 10, 15 minutes during lunch and practice with him to say my last name. He actually, towards the end of the week, he was like, not too bad. On stage, he Fuck could up. not have annihilated it anymore. <laughs> oh, my did. God. Yeah, no. he, oh, my God. He was so nervous, and he was, like, such a good man, too. He started sweating. He's like... <clears throat> <laughs> and I was like, dude, I am here. I am here. Please stop. Just stop. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back... He disrespected you. He came drunk. Like, fuck you. I'm leaving the way Yeah, that's up. different. But you, like, hurt the But you. I'm a bitch. She's so I'm just mean. a bitch. I'm a bitch. He was this and he was hot as fuck. Guys do that to chicks all the time. Why can't I be the guy doing it to the dude? I mean, the girl being it to the guy. No, I should do it to anyone. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid. But I had to give it up because I realized it was full of sugar and junk that you really shouldn't eat. We're all trying to be better, but a healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. With zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. The variety pack has four flavors— Cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. It tastes exactly like regular cereal from your childhood, but is super nutritious. It's delicious but super healthy cereal that really brings joy to your mornings or afternoons. And mixing cocoa with peanut butter is amazing and tastes exactly like a peanut butter cup. Go to magicspoon.com slash Gigi to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code Gigi at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gg and use the code gg to save $5 off. Thanks, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode of Genuinely GG. Now your little boy, it's Elijah, right? Elijah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's is that he you I read something like Hebrew after the sperm donor. Is that correct? It is he after yeah, uh, after Moses was Elijah. Um, I've always loved the name Elijah and I love that name, by the way. It's so pretty. It's very strong. Yes. Yeah, and it's respected in so many different cultures and religions. It's written in so many religious books as a respected uh prophet. Mm-hmm. Uh holy person Mm -hmm. elijah so yeah he's he's so cute oh my god halloween we were both matching cows for halloween it was like but when i put the cow part over my head he screamed mommy no 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 and he pulled it off my head I was like, I know he was a cow. You didn't didn't post anything. I know my dad took my dad took like pictures with his like gigantic like long lens camera. My dad is so cute. I love her dad. He's so so cute. My dad, can you send me the pictures? He's like, I have to edit. After I edit, I'm like, but dad, I don't want to post it for Christmas. I want to post it now for Halloween. She was asking how old your dad is. Uh, my dad is seventy three. No, your your boy, little boy. How old is Elijah now? Oh, oh, he, oh I thought her dad. I was like eighteen months. <laughs> you can tell me how old he is. I wasn't the question. Yeah. She's like she, she wants to know how old your dad is. Um, Eli, Eli is eighteen months. He's exactly one and a half. Okay, he's the cutest thing. It was so fun making him. I, and I, 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 I joke around about it, but I'm so serious. I really do feel like I, I made the perfect little specimen of a child. I bought the best sperm. I looked <laughs> high and low for the best of it, you know. And I got my money's worth. I have a question. Can you be like, I want a sperm donor who has brown hair, who's six three, so you can like tailor what you want. We we all we, I asked for the Babe, same thing. It's you can yeah. so hyper detailed. Like you, you have a long like psych analysis with the company I hired. It's a concierge company. Wow. And you have a huge sit down conversation with him. You fill out forms and forms and forms, and it gets so detailed everywhere from like genetics, aesthetically and internally. So it gets very detailed about that and so i got it all the way down to that like very t of a specific and i said i'm very 
anal about it, so I have to have photos. Um, yeah. Majority of sperm donors do not have photos. I, I, I would say that. about 85, 90% do not have photos. And the ones that, that do crazy. have photos have a photo of them at the age of five or six. Really? They don't, he had adult photo and childhood photos. I took one look. I'm like, God damn, why am I not dating this guy? <laughs> That's so funny. Like what? <laughs> but it's interesting. So only ten percent show. Oh, it's a picture. very low percentage. Because, but but everything is in our in our society is so based on like looks and this. And so well, I'm you have to understand. Like, majority of guys who are sperm donors statistically are donating when they're in college and they need make money. money. So they don't. So want- it's not about I'm trying to help the world. This guy, his okay. whole he wrote an essay for the child, an essay, a long story novel wow. that he wants one day for the child to have about why he decided to do this and why wow. he's a donor okay. so it's most cases are not like that they okay. go they pump they it d- up for and, and they get like a hundred bucks and they walk out or whatever yeah. it is wow that's sweet. it's really weird building it's like a build a bear workshop i don't know if you guys have those in texas yes. it's like a <laughs> workshop. It's like a, yeah it's like a build a baby <laughs> that is just so yeah. crazy to me wow well, you're doing it. I'm proud of you. Whether you end up Thank with your you. new boo, a hundred different new boos, or you do it all by yourself, I'm very proud of the statement that you are making, Rachel. It's big. It's huge. Uh, women so and, and and men out there need to understand. It's you can do it. You can. Everyone, you know, has the choice to want to do it or not, and it's available to people. Yes. And I think two people, they think, oh, I don't have the money to do that or this. There are ways to work around that. And at the end of the day, like if you really want to be a parent, you know, and you just go in and just check your body out. That's my number one advice to to everyone. Just see what you're what's going on and then take it from there. It doesn't have to be super scary up front. I was so scared at first. Yeah. Canceled appointment like I need to like cancel, cancel. Mm-hmm. And then I just went in. I'm like, just go freaking to the doctor and just see what your body's doing. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that you did too. You You guys watch Rachel on season two of Bradshaw Bench and follow her Instagram for her journey, Rachel Bradshaw. And I'm I'm about to try the hot works. Um, So I think everyone should go. Yes. It's actually hot works. H O T W O R X. X. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I'm going to try that. I want the skin clearing thing and the internal clearing thing. I need to do it it all. Everything. We're going to do all that. Yes. I can't wait to hear your single girl. I can't. I'm excited. I want to be jamming this Christmas. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> hopefully I'll take over the Mariah Carey. All I want for Christmas. Yeah, it's we need to be the play. new Mariah yes, Carey. Please, the, the new Mariah Carey. Mary. We have Rachel Bradshaw yes. for the Christmas. Yes, yes they're going to be the number <laughs> November twelfth. And uh, well, don't forget about me. We're no, gonna I'm pl- not forgetting we about game. you. We got to play. Anita wants to play a game with you. Oh, what is this game? Okay. Oh, she's going to tell you. So it's it's. Uh, I'm just going to ask you some fun questions. It's called "Forgive Me, I Have Sinned," but I'm keeping it nice and. This Airy. is the time I light my joints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the best prank you pulled on your dad? Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, there's probably so many. <laughs> Are you guys pranksters? <laughs> oh, yeah. My, I'm shocked he hasn't had a heart attack at this point. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Lacey, my sister, she got this snake off of Amazon, and it's like, it's a battery operated snake and you push the button and it slip it, it slithers. Oh, shit. we were doing like family prayer about to eat. Like there's like 10 of us <laughs> in a big circle. And I stuck that motherfucker underneath oh, the stove. There's like a little, a little opening. And in the middle of the prayer, it's actually on my Instagram. She pushes the button and it slithers across his foot. And he was like, Oh, shit. oh my <laughs> God. Oh my God. One of the funniest pranks we've ever played in our entire lives. And oh. it was hysterical. Oh my God. You're not yeah. afraid you're going to give him a heart attack. I mean, <laughs> no, he'll be fine. He's tough. She's like, he'll be fine. <laughs> he'll be fine. Next time we'll use just a bigger snake or an alligator. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> it was just too good. It was one of the funniest pranks I think I've ever played on anybody. Oh, my God. It's on your Instagram. We, we have, have to, to check, check it out. Your Instagram gotta, and yes. see this. I got to see this. Yes. Prank. Yeah, go look at it. It's <laughs> um. Have you? I know because you dated a lot and you went through hell. Yeah, and I'm, on these apps and stuff. But have you ever ghosted anyone? Have I ever? Okay. Ooh, yes, she, ladies and gentlemen, if you're only listening to this and not watching it, which you should be watching, <laughs> Rachel just grabbed her ponytail and did a hair and flick. Like, 
Okay. <laughs> Here, okay. This was in college. Okay. And I was, do y'all have Cheesecake Factory? Yes, girl. Yes, we, yes. Didn't, didn't LA just, make Cheesecake Factory? I think they did. <laughs> Probably. But I remember when it came out in Ohio, from Ohio for the first time, it was like the like elegant, most Best place cheesecake to factory? go. We're like, oh my god, cheesecake factory because we had like nothing there. <laughs> Fancy schmancy inside. Yes. <laughs> so I met this guy on like Facebook and <laughs> met him on you know on social media. Go on, met him there. Went on the date and um, he was wasted drunk. Like could barely even talk. So I was like, this motherfucker. So I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. And I went and got. We didn't have Uber then, and I got a cab and I left his ass at cheesecake factory. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to sit through a dinner with some drunk asshole yeah. and like pretend I'm having a good time. So I just left. Oh my God. I actually, <sighs> good I, for you listen, I've done I'm, that in the middle of a date. I'm not going to say his name because he has a very famous name. He's not a celebrity, but he's a very famous hair uh, person and has, his, he's huge. Wait, I've never known he's, this. So about- we were on a date and um, he's hot, right? What happened? Wait, he was, wait, he was a hairdresser. We're on a date. We're at his hairdresser. <laughs> he's a hair. He owns hair salon. Like oh. he's big. Okay, okay. Because I thought I'm like, would he be like no? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he, he, like, yeah. into so he, men. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we were at it on it, and then we're. I'm not gonna say where we were either, because if he ever listens, I don't care. He probably doesn't listen. We were at EP <laughs> and LP rooftop. EP, LP, and the drinks are starting to flow, and I start aggressively making out with him because he's so hot. And then he starts talking. And I think I've never heard him talk in all the years he had been doing my hair. We had only been like <laughs> playing footsie and like rubby rubby. I know who it is, by the way, now. Yeah. Okay, because I went to and one of the times. You know now, right? Yeah, because I can't. And he very started good looking. talking and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be right back. I have to use the restroom. No. And I you know. went down, left out the back door, grabbed an Uber and went home. Never talked to wow. him. He's never done my hair again since. He will never even take me in as, as a client either. I don't blame him. I mean, that was me. I have never spoken to actual... I don't want to say stupid. I, I've never spoken to... An, I hope he's not I, listening. No, no. He's definitely, <laughs> I'm sure he's not listening. He's probably doing hair somewhere. But <laughs> I've never... I've never experienced that level of, of mine, like, where it was... So he was just, like, very just, like not with it like it was just, almost like he was just five years old it was like a duh, like no like so you're you it's okay because he disrespected you he came drunk like fuck you i'm leaving to wake yeah, you up yeah that's different but you like hurt the but dude. i'm a bitch She's so i'm just mean. a bitch i'm a bitch he was this and he was hot as fuck that's okay listen guys do that to chicks all the time why can't i be the guy doing it to the dude i mean the girl being it to the no, guy no i should do it to anyone I, I've that. been I've been on a couple blind dates so like I would m- miserable and I would like go in the bathroom and like call like, like oh my god like what the hell like what the fuck but I would go sit there for like as long as I had that's why now I just do like quick coffee and if I like you we'll see each other again but oh my god I could never so good for you guys for oh man like if I went and he was drunk and he was what I would probably just sit there like you would just sit there and then the next day Anita would be like well, you know, he might have some really good sides to him, actually. <laughs> like, no, Anita, Make no. excuse, yeah. Oh, my God. That was a good game. Those were good questions. And I'm oh so God, excited yay. that we had you on yeah, this podcast. Amazing. And I would love to have you back, Wait, So yeah. congratulations on season two. I'm so excited Thank for November you. 12th to hear your November single 12? drop. Um, Thank you again. Thank and you. I, I'm proud of you for being an advocate for being an independent woman yeah well thank you thank you for this was so fun by the way i'm like drinking my wine thanks for having me thanks for listening to genuinely Gigi. download new episodes every week and if you haven't already subscribe and be sure to leave us a rating and review and while you're at it check out some of the other great shows available on straw hut media